I try to uh, balance my life as best I can. I don't go through airport scanners as much as I can and have x-rays, uh, these little things. Do you think those are bad for you? Those The new ones, aren't they like a radio wave? Yeah, they're, they're millimeter radio waves. I, I don't want to take any chances and also don't want to freak people out. But the old style ones that were banned in Europe first, they, they were potentially damaging. Um, x-rays definitely uh, try not to have as many as, as you can. But flying is oh, just as bad as an x-ray, isn't well, it? Well, that, that's the problem. Um, I was going through a scanner and uh, I said, I, I don't want to go through the scanner. And they got quite upset because it's a bother. But uh, they said, you know, it's just as much uh, damage to your body as the flight. And so I said, why do I want to double it? Uh, anyway, so I, I, I go through scanners, but I try not to. But let me tell you why I think it's so bad. Because scanners are going to change uh, what we call the epigenome. Now, a lot of people haven't heard of the epigenome. The genome, everybody knows. It's your DNA, uh, the code of life. The epigenome is what regulates and reads those genes at the right time. Okay, and so we've we knew about DNA. We know how to read the genome pretty easily. We can do that now on a Mars bar-sized device in a day. Uh, the epigenome is quite diffi- different. The epigenome is the the structure of how the DNA is looped around. If you look at the chromosome, you're not seeing the genome. You're really basically seeing the epigenome. And what we, what I think is causing aging is not that you're losing the DNA structure. You're not having mutations, you're actually changing the epigenome, which is the, the reader of the genes. CT is an amazing clinical tool that's used in a variety of clinical settings uh, throughout medicine to answer a number of questions uh, through a variety of disease states in a variety of different patient populations, emergency departments, inpatients, outpatients. And it's really such a good tool that its use has increased tremendously over the past several years to the point that now approximately 65 million CT scans are performed in the United States each year. So I'm going to answer another question. Are CAT scans dangerous? Okay, let's talk about that. Well, yes they are and they come with some huge risks. Um, A CAT scan of the abdomen is equivalent to being exposed to over 200 chest x-rays or 1,500 dental x-rays. The problem is it's ionized radiation, which means it creates damage within the DNA and also causes cancer. It's accumulative. So the bottom line is only get a CAT scan if absolutely necessary. I would recommend doing a MRI or an ultrasound instead if you could. The FDA has stated that 30 to 50% of CAT scans are medically unnecessary. Because of the way the CT images are acquired, it does produce more radiation exposure to the patient than many of the other imaging studies that we do in radiology. And while the exact amount of radiation exposure patients receive varies significantly depending on the body part imaged or uh, the clinical question we're trying to answer or the size of the patient, as a rough rule of thumb, a CT of the chest produces about 100 times that of a normal chest x-ray study or about 20 times that of a typical mammogram study kind of treatment. There are three primary therapies for cancer, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Surgery works by directly removing the tumor. The radiation therapy provides x-rays to kill individual cells, and the chemotherapy provides chemicals that can kill those individual cells. But they have side effects. The best therapies that we can produce really are the result of optimizing the amount of tumor that we can kill by any treatment and minimizing the amount of damage that we cause to the normal cells that would be affected by that treatment. Along with colleagues at the Center for Evidence-Based Imaging, we were interested in doing a study to look at how much cumulative radiation exposure our patients received over time from recurrent CT scanning and also to figure out a sense of how great their risk was of developing cancer from these cumulative radiation exposures. So we started with a group of over 31,000 patients who had received CT scans at Brigham and Women's Hospital or Dana-Farber Cancer Center in 2007. And for each of these patients, we looked back over our 22-year medical records to determine all of the CT exams that each of these patients had had. 
we found that about a third of our patients had received at least five CT scans in the previous 22 years. 5% of our patients had had 22 CT scans or more. And the top percentile, 1% of our patients had had 38 or more CT scans over that 22 year period with an average for all of our patients of over six CT scans apiece. So once we had this cumulative CT history for each patient, we then assigned typical doses for each type of CT scan uh, with each individual body part producing a different typical radiation exposure. And that allowed us to get a cumulative radiation dose history for each of our patients. We then took that dose history and converted to an approximate cancer risk history using some standard techniques that take into account a patient's gender and the age at which they had each of these CT exposures. Well, fortunately, we found that the majority of the patients in our group accrued relatively small cumulative radiation-induced cancer risks. We did find that about 7% of our cohort had had enough cumulative radiation exposure from all of their CT studies over time to increase their cancer risk by 1% or more above baseline. 1% doesn't sound like a large amount of risk, especially when you consider that at baseline, 42% of us in the United States are expected to develop a cancer of some form or another uh, during our lifetimes. Um, but what we really need to think about when we're talking about medical imaging is weighing the risks of the imaging against the benefits of the imaging. And what this study really focused us on is paying more attention to those patients that get a lot of recurrent imaging time and time again in repeat visits to the emergency department or another healthcare setting. When you add up cumulative risks over time, these need to be balanced against the benefits that we expect to receive from the information provided by our CT scanning or other radiology studies. And in some cases where we have a large number of repeat scans performed that may not show new findings, then that risk-benefit balance sometimes changes to the point that it's no longer appropriate or in the patient's best interest to do another repeat CT scan. Well, so what we found is the biggest disruptor of the epigenome is a, a broken chromosome, a DNA break. And I don't know about the scanners, that's just an abundance of caution, but an X-ray will damage your DNA, no question. Um, even going out in the sun will do a bit of that. And we think that the cell's reaction to that break, having to unwrap the the DNA from its chromatin, we call it, and, uh, and then rewrap it, is what eventually disrupts the ability to read the right gene at the right place. So DNA damage is essentially a, s a little scratch on, on the DVD, and that accumulates over time. So being out in the sun does that, but being out in the sun also is beneficial. Your body produces more vitamin D. Yeah, well, th so there's also a theory called antagonistic pleiotropy, which is what's good for you when you're young, comes back to bite you when you're old. Ah. So you might look good and feel good and get vitamin D when you're young, but the cu accumulation of these scratches on the epigenome ends up, you know, I'm formerly an, an Australian, originally an Australian, I'm now American and Australian. Uh, I grew up in the Australian sun, and I can tell you that, you know, most Australians look older than they should. Well, a third of Australians get some form of skin cancer. So that's that's crazy. Yeah. But what's also going to happen is it'll disrupt your epigenome over time mm. and you'll look old. Um, but if you have an x-ray, you're going to damage your organs. You're going to accelerate aging, I believe, in your body. Um, and it happen you can't avoid double strand breaks, cr broken chromosomes. It happens all the time. There's trillions of cells in your body and it's happening all the time. So living is a problem. Okay. Flying. But Flying is even worse, uh, but what we're working on is how do you get back that original information into the cell and make a cell not just believe that it's 20 again, but actually be 20. Mm. So what do you do? We reprogram them. There are a set of genes that we've, we and others have found, uh, three main ones, that when you put them into a cell or even into a mouse, uh, they become younger again. One of the challenges for our ordering physicians when they order one of these CT scans is it's really difficult for them to get a sense of how much cumulative imaging and cumulative risk their patient has accrued. So one of the tools that we're working on developing here is a, 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 called a decision support tool. 
And what would happen is when a physician orders a CT scan for one of their patients, what we would do is automatically gather all this information, count how many CT scans the patient has had, give an estimate of what their total radiation exposure is and what their total cancer risk is from our previous imaging, and create a pop-up screen for the ordering physician in real time to alert them this patient has had enough previous imaging to place them at high risk uh, for developing cancer from our recurrent CT imaging. Does that risk-benefit balance still make sense that you'd like to proceed with this scan today, or is there a different approach that might be preferable? So if you've been exposed to a lot of CAT scans, here are some things that you can do to minimize the damage and to help uh, reduce the effects of radiation in the body. High quality seek help is really good to counter the radiation. Spirulina, wheatgrass juice, chlorella, extra virgin olive oil, cruciferous vegetables, sprouts, especially the cruciferous sprouts, green tea, curcumin, and there's many other superfoods that can help you. So it's all about balancing the accumulation of radiation and doing things to actually protect the cells against the radiation as far as your diet. Another reason to eat healthy in large amounts of vegetables. Mm -hmm.